All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanna go over the tools we use as network engineers. So when you become a network engineer, you're not just gonna be you know, on the CLI only. You're, you're gonna be using tools to uh, make your work efficient, fast, and you know, just the just the day to day activities and tools that you're going to be using because you're not just going to be configuring. You're going to be doing other other things as an engineer. Um, and I would like to share you some of the tools that we use and probably the tools that you guys should actually learn about uh, before you become network engineers. That way, you can have um, you know that experience of of what we use. So, uh, I'm going to start off with um, the easiest tool that or the most common tool that we use. Um, and this is a paid software. Um, most companies have it. It's called Secure CRT. So it's a software uh, made by Van Dyke Company, and they made the software called Secure CRT, which is basically a putty, basically a terminal server or terminal, basically, basically a way for you to get into and SSH into devices. And it has a lot of tools. You know, there's, you can use scripts in it. You can do a lot of different things. It is a bit pricey, so I wouldn't recommend buying it unless you're like full fledged, like serious about this, and you have your own home lab. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, in your home lab, but obviously when you're working day to day, this is a absolutely amazing tool. There are certain things that you can do, like you can create like buttons so you can quickly add configurations or like quickly add show commands. Um, you can have all your sessions added um, in one go. You can quickly connect to multiple sessions. You can add con um, add configurations on multiple sessions at the same exact time. So imagine like you're on like 10 different devices. You can um, run show commands on all of those like 10 devices at the same exact time. So it's pretty cool. It's very efficient. Um, there's a lot of automation as well. You can add some scripts to it. I think they're like VBS scripts. Um, and I, I've had some scripts where I was able to basically log sessions. So if you guys don't know, um, as an engineer, we log sessions, which is basically like anytime you add a con any, any configurations that you're adding, it's going to save it to an external file, maybe a text file or a log file. And that's going to actively print whatever you did on that device. It's going to print just to monitor behavior and actually go back to check to see what changes you made, right? So it can do that. You can add automation within it. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even used the tool fully. Like, I, I, it's an amazing tool. Um, the UI is pretty good. When you first get into it, it's a little bit confusing, but it, there's a learning curve. But once you learn it, it's like, it's amazing. Um, pretty much all the network engineers I know um, pretty much you'd like to use um, Secure CRT. They do have it on Mac. They do have it on Windows. Um, but, you know, I, I've always used it on Windows. If you are on Mac, I know there's another software called like iTerm. Haven't really used that, but that's one software that I know um, on the Mac end. That's what some network engineers tend to use. Um, but besides that, that's going to be our main putty or terminal server uh, place where you can actually SSH um, and you can do a lot of different things like TFTP and there's a lot more. Like it, Secure CRT is an amazing software, but it is paid, unfortunately, and it's kind of pricey. It's like two hundred dollars for like three years. So, um, but it's good. It's good. It gets the job done, and it's uh, it's an amazing software. So that's one. Um, another software that we use is can be. Um, I'm gonna talk about Jira. So Jira is a ticketing software, right? It, it the whole point of Jira is to, um, you know, it, it it's mainly depends on your company. Some some companies either use Jira or ServiceNow. There probably is other ticketing softwares, but Jira seems to be the most common and the biggest. So basically. Yeah, there's like queues, there's ticketing queues, um, and you can add different tables and different uh, dashboards and stuff. Like it's it's a pretty complex software to be honest, uh, but it's it's to manage your workflow. So as a network engineer, you're probably gonna get tickets from other teams depending on how big the team is. Um, and they may say, hey, we need, you know, there's an outage here, fix this outage, or there's some whatever, what you know, you get tickets on whatever reason. And when you get those tickets, all you're really gonna do is you're essentially going to get the ticket, you can change the sort of status of the ticket. Like you can assign it to yourself. You can put a date. I'll probably put something here up here on how the ticket looks like. But basically it's that. It's very simple to use um, kind of when you're new. To, when you're new to it, it's kind of difficult. But uh, there's a comment section um, and then you can put it in different statuses and you can see the workflow like, you know, like how close are you from completing the ticket? Is it fixed? You know, do you have to send it back for more information? It's all that kind of stuff. So that's that's Jira. Um, that's one of our ticketing queues. ServiceNow is another one, um, but you know, they're all the same. And all these sort of tools, you can pretty much learn on YouTube. Like I would only learn it like once you get the job, but just be familiar with with it um, before you become network engineers as well. So that's Jira. Um, now another tool that we can use um, as engineers um, is basically going to be. Um, Wireshark. So Wireshark is basically a packet capture. So um, basically what's happening, it's going to show you in real time the packets that are traversing the network. 
right? And it can go up to all the way up to, I believe, like layer, you know, two, three, four, five, you know, uh, up to seven. And it, it can show you things that are going on, like the layer, like the TCP handshake. So whenever you're troubleshooting, you can kind of see the behavior of the network um, in real time and see what's going on, especially within layer four, to see what's, you know, what's happening behind the scenes to, to potentially troubleshoot a particular issue that's, you know, maybe layer three is working. Maybe you can ping, but we just DNS is the issue. So you can kind of use Wireshark to look at the, the you know, the pa the packets and how they're traversing in real time. So it's a it's a lot of information in, in, <laughs> in Wireshark, and I'll probably make a video on Wireshark on how to use it. But it's a it's a quite intense software because you, you have to do a lot of filtering because there's a lot of information that you really, like, like you don't even really need to be honest like it's 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 almost too much information um on there so uh, i mean that's that's wireshark it's a it's an amazing software it's a software that you know we use as network engineers and you'll probably use it day to day yourself um and and, and it's like a, it's a free software it's really amazing and uh it, yeah it's pretty cool so um now let's talk about um network monitoring basically network monitoring essentially is um it gives you the ability to monitor what's going on within the network. So some of the network monitoring tools that we use is SolarWinds. So SolarWinds basically is a network monitoring tool that gives you the ability to monitor traffic in real time. And it gives you alerts on when something happens within your network. So it's a really cool software because, you know, I believe in there is no such thing as a good network without monitoring, because if you can't monitor the network's behavior, whenever things happen in real time, then like, what are you going to do? Right? So it's a really amazing software. Um, the interface, and I'll probably put it here how it looks like. So you go into the interface and you can see all your devices. You can see what devices are up, which, which devices are critical, which are down, uh, which devices are having errors. Like it can quickly give you that without having to log into devices, you know, in real time and try to verify what's going on. So it's a really cool software. It's called SolarWinds. And that's a, a software that, you know, you, you'd you like to use as a network engineer. I know it, it can give you like email alerts. It can tell you a lot of information and give you statistics and give you historical data as well uh, to see what was going on. So it's an amazing software um, and it's it's quite cool. So that's one of them. Another software is called MRTG. That's another software that um, basically can monitor traffic. Um, you know, and I'll put some graphs here of how, how MRTG looks like, but it's a pretty cool tool. It basically gives you the ability to um, like just look at graphs, look at data, you know, check to see, you know, what were the incoming packets, what were the outgoing packets. And it, it's it's meant, I mean, all this data is really coming in from the devices, but it's just aggregating that data in an easy to see environment on a website where you can just like quickly look at. So it's a, it's an amazing software. Um, and I, you know, I use these tools all the time, right? So that's one of them. Another tool is called Rancid. And that is a sort of a network repository, um, kind of like, um, or basically like a repository of all of the commands or all of the, you know, what's configured on all these devices. So let's say you have a network with a thousand devices, right? Um, instead of having to log into each one of these devices, you can search for like a certain like a certain IP address. So you can just go and search and like grep the actual IP address you want of a device on all of those devices on that network. So it's a pretty cool tool, um, and it gives you that ability to do that. So it's a it's an amazing tool. Um, it's called Rancid. Um, and it can also give you like historical on the configuration changes that were added. Let's say someone made a change and it made some mistakes on those changes. You can actually see the change and see how, how that change was made. And you can actually roll back that change to what it was before. So it's a, it's an amazing tool. Um, you know, we use it all the time as a, as a network engineer ourselves. So that, that's kind of, kind of what it is. And then basically there's, um, another tool called NetBrain. NetBrain is a sort of a network mapping tool. It's one of my favorite tools. It, it, it kind of actually looks like a, like Packet Tracer, but it's a cool tool because sometimes you want a visual cue of what you're looking at as a network engineer, and you can actually you know build out NetBrain, um, and it can actually map out the network for you. You can say, hey, like I want to map how does this router get to this switch, and you can actually see the paths within the switch. Um, it's a really cool tool. I use it for like finding the MAC address. Um, it's a really nice tool. Um, it's actually one of my favorite tools to use. But like I said, whatever company you join, they may or may not have these tools, right? And I would recommend getting these tools before. Um, I don't even know how you do it on your own. Uh, but these are really, you know, companies usually have these tools at the end of the day. But you can watch videos on how they're used and how they work. So that's some of the tools that we use as a... Uh, as network engineers. Um, I mean, another one is like Visio. You can just map out networks using Visio or Paint or whatever, um, or Draw.io. Those are websites where you can actually map the network. If you want to build out topologies, 
Um, you would use like tools like draw.io. You would use tools like um, Visio and all that stuff. So, you know, as a network engineer, there's a lot of different tools that we use. You know, that's kind of typical, but um, hopefully I didn't give you guys too much information, but that's kind of what we do as, as network engineers and the tools that we use. So uh, if you guys are looking for mentorship and guidance on how to become a network engineer um, and land your first network engineering role, please click the link down below and I can show you exactly how to get into a network engineering position. Um, with that being said, everyone, I really do appreciate you guys' time. Um, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Um, and then, um, you know, if, if you guys have any comments or questions or you guys have experience with these tools, please leave them down in the comment section below. Um, and I'd like to discuss some of those tools with you and maybe have a discussion down there. So thank you guys so much for your time and peace.